Yes, here we go again. <clears throat> Yo, howdy, it's me, Benny Dunville, and shock horror, I'm back for another video. Maybe you caught my YouTube debut where I showed off the SSL UC1 back in May of 2021. And what we're covering in this video is sort of a natural continuation of that one, because today we're taking a look at SSL 360 1.4. Based on the name, you'd be forgiven for thinking that SSL 360 1.4 was just an update to the 360 app. The SSL super brain that allows control over UF8, UC1 and the plug-in mixer. Now there are of course new features added to 360, but launching alongside the 1.4 update is also an update to the Channel Strip 2 plugin, the Bus Compressor 2 plugin, and the highly anticipated release of an entirely new Channel Strip plugin, the SSL 4KB. <music> 4KB is an incredibly detailed and authentically modeled plugin. SSL have put a huge amount of time and resources into developing this plugin and have been meticulous down to every last detail. There have been several revisions where the team went back and forth, altering the EQ, tweaking the threshold of the channel compressor and trying to perfect the brand new saturation options to get the plugin to match as closely as possible to the rare and revered console. SSL 4KB is the first of its kind in regards to it being an emulation of the very first SSL console, the SL4KB. I briefly covered some of the SSL history in my launch video for the Bus Plus, so I'll try not to go too deep here, but the SL4000B series was released in 1976. It was a precursor to the hugely popular and famous E-series consoles that shaped the sound of the 80s. 4KB was where it all began for SSL. This is a console from before the age of the Brown EQ, let alone the black EQ. Unique to 4KB, the channel compressor is actually based on the bus compressor design. SSL hadn't yet developed the channel strip compressor into its own identity and circuit at this point, so they used the center section bus compressor as the design reference. Rooted in 4KB is the SSL DNA and sound that later models of consoles were highly desired for, in particular the E and G series consoles. A mix on one of these solid state logic boards and through an SSL bus compressor is the sound of a record. And that still rings true for 4KB. It's thick and punchy like an E-series console, yet the EQ is musical and smooth, but it still has its own distinct sound. And maybe that's because of the colourful characteristics of 4KB. In fact, I'm not sure they ever made a less clean console. The 4KB had transformer loaded mic amps using Jensen's let me check the teleprompter. JE115KE transformers and DBX Blackcan 202 VCA faders on each channel's output path. Extra special care was taken in modeling these circuits down to the individual component level. And the results are fantastic. 4KB is loaded with magical tone. This 1.4 update also brings a brand new GUI to SSL's channel strip plugins. The graphics have been revamped with more of a modern and cleaner look. And gone is that fake 3D effect on the knobs and controls. The overall shape and layout of the plugin has now been made more compact. It's not just a fresh lick of paint though. The update also includes new features for the plugins. Let's start by taking a look at the saturation modeling of 4KB. Input trim allows you to adjust the level of signal going into and driving the circuits of the console. Real character though comes when we go below, to the switch labelled pre and the knob labelled mic. When the pre switch is engaged you can dial in the 4KB's mic amp which is driven by that Jensen transformer. You can dial this in for a subtle thickening and richness or crank it for some really dirty drive. Also new to this update, the channel strips now have an output fader. However, the fader is not the final output stage of these plugins. That's because the fader in 4KB is modeled on the console's actual black can VCA fader, so it's not clean. You can actually push the fader for more tone. That's why at the bottom of the plugin, we have an output trim. 
This is the final output stage of the plugin. It's a clean digital trim, so you can push the VCA fader for more character and then trim back the overall output level of the plugin with this clean digital gain. In the center section are two more new features, width and pan. These controls only work on a stereo instance of a channel strip plugin. They will be grayed out if mono. Width lets you dial up and add some stereo widening or dial down to make the track more mono. And pan, of course, lets you pan. Polarity invert, solo, cut, solo safe, solo clear and sidechain listen controls have now all been moved into the center section. A new 360 button has been added at the top of the plugin. And over to the EQ, where we have no new features per se, but the EQ and filters are brand new and fully modeled on the EQ section of the SL4KB. So all of the frequency points, EQ curves and filter slopes are all new and unique to the 4KB plugin. The 4KB EQ is fairly similar in sound and style to the E-Series Brown EQ. If you've used an E-Series EQ before, and most likely you have, I think you'll feel right at home with this EQ. Or maybe like you're at home, but it's got new carpets and sofas. In Channel Strip 2, you might remember the EQ circuit had an E-Mode. That's obviously not a feature we need in this plugin, so the button is absent from the design. Over in the Dynamics section, you'll notice that the Fast Attack and Peak buttons and the Hold knob are also absent. They aren't features that translate from Channel Strip 2 into this 4KB plugin. But we do have an extremely useful and welcome new feature to the Dynamics circuit, a compressor mix control. Just like the EQ, the Dynamics section is all brand new and faithfully modelled on the real console. As I mentioned earlier, the Dynamics section of the SL4KB was quite unique as the channel compressor design was actually based on the bus compressor. Everybody knows that sound. Fast, grabby, gluey, perfect for buses and entire mixes. But with 4KB, you can have that sound on every single channel. Another unique feature of the 4KB compressor is the inclusion of the DS ratio, which when selected in combination with the DS release time, puts the compressor in a DS -er mode. DS release time can also be used without the DS ratio, which then allows the compressor to utilize super fast release times of around 30 milliseconds-ish. Super fast for this compressor, anyway. The rest of the release times again show off this compressor's family ties to the bus compressor, especially with the inclusion of the auto setting. In the bottom right corner, we also have a new HQ button, which enables oversampling for 4KB. Perhaps though, the most exciting and game-changing new feature is the inclusion of new producer presets from Benny Dunville. I heard he's a great guy, really good producer, fashionable, handsome, smug. <laughs> My approach to making these was to try not to make the more generic kick one, kick two, guitar lead, trombone solo, quick fix type presets that I feel that a lot of channel strip plugins come bundled with. I tried to make some more characterful and bold sounding presets. Some are almost aimed at being a full on type of effect rather than a gentle channel strip sculpting. They're all pretty fun. You might have to adjust your input levels depending on what you're driving them with but I think you'll enjoy them. So 361.4 also updates Channel Strip 2. Channel Strip 2 has a striking new GUI design, matching the new shape and format of 4KB, but with its own color scheme and identity that carries over from the previous version. Channel Strip 2 also benefits from some of those new features we saw in 4KB, width, pan, compressor mix and high quality oversampling are now all built into Channel Strip 2. Bus Compressor 2 has also been updated, but it's mostly just a bug fix update and compatibility for 361.4. 360, 4KB, Channel Strip 2 and Bus Compressor 2 are now fully native for Apple Silicon machines. Excellent news for anyone on an M1 or M2 Mac and also great for those of us considering making the transition soon. Of course, all three plugins are fully compatible and controllable by SSL's UF8 and UC1 controllers. In case you weren't aware of how the UC1, UF8 and 360 ecosystem works, maybe go and watch my UC1 video. We saw earlier how the 4KB plugin removes some of the controls Channel Strip 2 has, yet they physically remain on UC1. 
so these controls become inactive on UC1 when using 4KB. But with new features such as our preamp controls, width or compressor mix, simply press the enter button on UC1 to open the extended functions menu. You can then scroll through the list of additional functions that both consoles now have. Select the function that you wish to control by pressing the scroll knob down. The function becomes green showing that the parameter is activated and you can now dial in the value with the knob. Very simple. Press again to deselect. The addition of the extended functions menu now means that you have full control over every parameter of both plugins directly from the UC1. You can load up any combination of 4KB and Channel Strip 2 plugins across your mix and scroll through them seamlessly on UC1. Along with the track name and number, the LCD display now also shows which plugin is loaded on the currently selected track. And the final thing to talk about is the actual 1.4 update to 360 itself. On the homepage of SSL 360, in the bottom left corner, is the Sleep Settings button. This opens a simple menu where we can activate sleep mode. UC1 and UF8 will turn off their screens after 20 minutes. No screensavers, no logos, just off. Underneath UC1, we have a new meter calibration button. Pressing this opens up a new menu where we can calibrate the VU meter on UC1. To calibrate, you simply select a number that appears on the meter. Check the needle on the VU meter is correctly displaying at that position. If it's not, use the plus and minus symbols in the menu to correct it. Then move on to the next number until you've been through them all and are freshly calibrated. If we launch the plugin mixer, you'll notice that just like the channel strip plugins, there's been a refresh to the visuals to get the console matching the new cleaner and sharper aesthetics of the plugin GUIs. It's easy to tell the difference between an instance of Channel Strip 2 and 4KB simply by looking at the channel strips. Zoom has been removed from the plugin mixer. There is now only one level of zoom, what we're looking at now. Simply scroll up or down to see more of the channel strip. I think this makes navigation in the plugin mixer and simply just controlling the channels much more manageable. There are tabs on the mixer window which can collapse certain areas to allow more of the console to display on screen at once such as here where we can remove the meters and routing information and here where we can collapse the plug-in mixer options. No more zoom, so what has happened to the zoom button on UC1 I hear ye ask? Well, pressing the zoom button on UC1 now acts as a toggle for the bus compressor plug-in view. You now get tiny mini bus comps on the side of the mixer when the window is collapsed. Transport controls were introduced to the 360 plug-in mixer a while ago, but you now have the ability to control them directly from your keyboard. Transport can be collapsed away too, of course, if you'd like more screen space for the mixer. And finally, a highly requested feature is here, for certain doors only. For Studio One, Live and Reaper, Track Select Follow is here. Fantastic and congratulations if you're a user of one of those doors. And that about wraps this all up. I hope you've enjoyed this little update. SSL 360 1.4 and the relevant plugin updates should all be available now, unless I have published this video early and broken all of those NDAs. But yeah, go get it. I'm obviously not gonna break the aforementioned NDAs, but I reckon I can probably get away with saying that the updates will keep coming and SSL have some really exciting stuff in the works. So stay tuned, keep your eyes peeled. Hello, hello, I'm here in field reporter mode, wearing the same clothes as I was, but it's several days after the initial video shoot. I'm bringing you exclusive, fresh and juicy information on the upcoming SSL 360 1.5 update. We only just covered 1.4. So my extremely reliable and confidential sources have informed me that in 1.5 we can expect to see track select follow and track cut and solo coming to Cubase. Oh, and some breaking news coming in about 4KB. It's going to be free for UC1 users. Don't drop it. I better just call Andy at SSL though and just make sure that all that stuff he told me I am allowed to actually say in this video. So we'll give him a ring. I thought it could be fun 
have a little chat with him on camera. You know, he's the guy. This is Andy, uh, SSL. Good friend. But he normally answers. Well, I guess it's out there now, Andy. So I think we'll end this video by playing some clips of me processing some loops through my presets in 4KB. It might be fun. If you're wanting a deep dive on the plugin and how it sounds in every possible scenario, sorry, but I expect that someone else will have made that. So maybe go for a little search after. So yeah, I'm Benny. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll be back soon. Maybe I won't. Say hi in the comments if you want, or send me death threats on Instagram. I'll catch you later. See ya.